Hello and welcome to second session of ASME B31.3 course. This is Ali and I hope you are doing well. It's my pleasure to have you in this course. As discussed in previous session, many boilers, explosions and related casualties led to preparation of ASME boiler and pressure vessel code and ASME B31 codes to protect boilers and pressure piping against failure. Actually, ASME B31 provide adequate safety for our piping project due to its scope of work. As mentioned in ASME B31.3, the code specifies engineering requirement for safe design and construction of pressure piping. Now the question is, in which way does the code provide safety for our projects? To answer this question, let's refer to ASME B31.3. The code section includes the following reference to acceptable material specifications and component standard including dimensional requirements and pressure temperature ratings requirements for design of component and assemblies including piping supports requirement and data for evaluation and limitation of stresses, reactions and movements associated with pressure, temperature change and other forces, guidance and limitation on selection and application of materials, components and joining methods, requirement for fabrication, assembly and erection of pipings requirement for examination, inspection, and testing of piping. So, safety factors have been implemented to those guidance, limitations, and requirements. In this course, we will discuss how those safety factors are implemented by using Code rules and requirements. Therefore, the philosophy laid behind the code is so important. As an engineer, you are familiar with the concept of safety factor as a margin to protect our project against surpassing allowable loads. Failure theories such as maximum principal stress, maximum shear stress, and one mices provide safety factors to our project to protect metallic components against surpassing allowable stress. In this regard, safety factor is defined as a yield stress divide allowable stress definitely will be greater than one. Each failure theory has its own safety factors that may vary from another failure theories. The conservative failure theory brings us more safety while imposing more cost and vice versa. So what failure theory shall be used for our pressure piping to optimize the safety and cost. We never select failure theory for our project ourselves because we cannot optimize the safety factor. So we use another strategy to protect all pressure piping systems against failure. We trust in code requirements instead of considering all safety factors because during years of code application through 
thousands of projects all around the world, the safety factors are optimized due to feedbacks gathered from those projects. It's interesting that in new revision of code, the lower stress of material may modify due to feedbacks and experience gathered from various projects all around the world. In other words, instead of selecting failure theories, we trust in code rules and requirements specialized for our project due to its scope of work. We transfer the responsibility of selecting appropriate safety factor to the code and this is the philosophy laid behind using it. I hope you find this session beneficial and in next session with an example I will show you how safety factor implemented in ASME B31.3